history of Waterloo College and Seminary began 37 years ago. Here we see Dr. H.T. Lehman, since 1944, president of the College and Seminary. Dr. Lehman turns the pages of the minutes book and pauses to read the minutes of the first meeting of the Board of Governors held in the year 1910. This meeting was called to discuss the formation of a seminary to promote higher Christian learning. The following year, on Thanksgiving Day, 1911, the first unit of the seminary was dedicated at Waterloo. This plaque on one of the college buildings is in memory of the first professor and dean, Dr. Linky. Growing enrollment calls for additional buildings. The architect's drawing shows what was proposed and what was eventually realized. After World War I, students returned to the classroom, Dr. Little lecturing. Further increase in enrollment in the high school department made an addition to the new building necessary. This was begun in 1922 and completed and dedicated in May 1924. The years 1924 and 1925 were important years in our march of progress. Waterloo College was founded in 1924, and in the autumn of that year, negotiations for affiliation with the University of Western Ontario were begun. Here we see Dr. Alec Potter, then dean of our college, conferring with Dr. Sherwood Fox, president of the University of Western Ontario. Dr. Potter presents his brief on affiliation and discusses the standards required by the university. Dr. Fox is satisfied that Waterloo College can meet the requirements of affiliation and the conference comes to a successful close. In the autumn of 1925, our college calendar announced that Waterloo College was now affiliated with the University of Western Ontario. 1927, Waterloo planned for further expansion. In 1929, education was introduced. Here we see young women students entertaining at tea hour. During World War II, our college students were trained under the Canadian Officers Training Corps. Here we see them marching at camp. All you had hoped for, all you had, you gave to save mankind. Yourself you scorned to save. Returning veterans are interviewed by a member of our faculty, Professor Kelly. Vocational guidance and problems of rehabilitation are discussed. This veteran, like many others, chose the benefits available for a university education, the door of opportunity. Our registrar, Miss Axford, examines the students' records and approves courses to be taken. The Dean, Dr. Carl Klink, talks with a student about her plans for a vocation. Students are given tests of personality and intelligence as a further aid in counseling. In the summer of 1946, storage rooms on the fourth floor of the present building were speedily converted into dormitories to accommodate our student veterans. Here are two of our veterans, one in a studious mood and the other, well, we'll let you decide. boarding 
Club operates our dining room and provides meals at cost for resident students. Meet Mr. Jack Wetlopper, the president of the Students' Boarding Club of Waterloo College. of many student activities, sports in particular. And here is our champion hockey team of 1947. The annual invitation games are well attended by high school students from all parts of central western Ontario. Each morning, chapel service is observed. Here, students and faculty meet in common worship. This is our college library, our men's common room, the women's common room, and a classroom. Professor Scott lectures to students in psychology on the importance of human relations. Courses in the basic sciences are being extended. Students send a social gathering with chapel service. Arthur Conrad, a student whose home is in Nova Scotia, conducts the service. Waterloo College cooperates with the Kitchener Waterloo Hospital. A new plan provides for the student nurses to receive university training at the college. Courses in sociology, biology, and chemistry will supplement the clinical and ward training received at the hospital. Our president and dean are conferring with hospital officials and working out details of courses to be given. This is our women's residence, which partially meets the need for lodging our out-of-town women students. This building was formally opened in the autumn of 1946, and plans are being made to accommodate an ever-increasing number of co-eds. Visual education was introduced at Waterloo College in 1945, and we are now leading the way in this new development. Another progressive step was the introduction of courses in music appreciation. Here we see Dr. Leupold, director of music, explaining a symphony with the help of the blackboard, a record player, and the printed score. Another recent development is our Department of Fine Art, which was established in 1943 under Mr. Cleghorn. Students attend lectures in art history and appreciation. They also have an opportunity of expressing themselves through drawing and painting.
are the Waterloo College graduates of 1947. The baccalaureate service for the graduation class usually takes place at St. Matthew's Church, Kitchener. Professor Raymond, honorary president of the class, leads the procession into the church. Following this is Convocation Day in London. More than 250 of our graduates remember the day on which they received their degrees from the hands of the Chancellor of the University of Western Ontario. Our male chorus, under the direction of Dr. Leupold, went in concert tour in the spring of 1947. They traveled 1,500 miles and gave 25 concerts. This is a story of progress, but the story does not stop here. We look to the future with confidence. A larger campus and additional buildings will give Waterloo College its rightful place in university education, serving church and nation.